Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with another live episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about something that I believe is often overlooked, often neglected, and is potently and critically part of every top producing mortgage professional's arsenal, a key distinction that makes the difference between the top producers, the top dogs, and the mediocre majority. And that is the marketing metrics that matter. How to measure your progress as a mortgage professional. Because let's be real, the average mortgage professional, the Joe Schmo LO, tends to use what I call the swag method. Scientific wild ass guess. They have no freaking clue what's going on. You ask them what their key metrics are in terms of even something as simple as how much did you make in the last quarter or how much did you make year to date or how much did you make last year? A lot of them don't even know their numbers in terms of revenue, let alone volume, let alone how many leads, apps or closings they're doing, how many units they're doing, let alone their lead to app ratio or the app to close deal ratio or anything in between. They're literally asleep at the wheel. They have no freaking clue when it comes to the key metrics that drive their business. And really that begs to ask the question, some of you might even be wondering, even with that preface, why bother tracking the metrics, store? I mean, I got a lot going on. I'm closing deals. I'm chasing down docs. I'm processing files. I'm meeting with realtors. I'm meeting with clients. I got a lot of shit going on, Dorn. Why should I bother making this a top priority in my business to be tracking these metrics? I mean, I get it, Dorn. It's good to have this, but why should I make it mission critical? Well, I'm glad you asked. I got a few key reasons why I believe every mortgage professional needs to make it a mission critical must to track their key performance indicators, their KPIs. The first is that if you don't track your metrics, you don't know whether you're improving. You can't improve that which you don't measure, can you? I mean, how would you know if it's improved if you're not measuring it? How would you know if it's moving forward? stagnating or regressing unless you're actually tracking it. You can't improve that which you don't measure. So that's the key piece. I mean, one of the great parables throughout history that really depicts the power of tracking KPIs, key performance indicators, is the story of Henry Ford in his manufacturing plant when he was manufacturing the early vehicles, the early Fords. He had a massive breakthrough in productivity in his plant just by applying one distinction tied to tracking his metrics. And here's what it was. He got his day crew to track how many vehicles they used during their day shift. And in very big, bold print on the floor of the plant, they would write down how many units, how many vehicles they produced during that shift. Then when they left and the night shift came on, it was a competition between day shift and night shift. And they went to work to try and beat the number that was on the floor from the day shift. And because each crew was competing against each other and they were tracking one KPI, one key key performance indicator, how many units of actual vehicles they produced within their shift. Every single shift, they got sharper. Every single shift, they got better. Every single shift, the compounding effect of a little bit of advancement, improvement, and incremental enhancement in performance was compounded day upon day, night upon night, week upon week, month upon month, and he had a massive improvement. I don't know the specific statistic, but I know he had a significant increase in productivity, performance, and profit just from that one KPI being utilized to create positive culture and competition amongst his teams. Imagine if you were to apply a KPI of similar impact in your business what kind of difference that would make. Even if you're a solo LO, 
doing it all yourself, wearing all the hats. If you were to track just one metric that really got your competitive juices flowing, even if you're competing just against who you were yesterday, if it's even just one KPI that allows you to celebrate progress, celebrate your wins, praise that progress, ignite the fire of desire to get better and to keep advancing that one metric that's meaningful to you. That's the power of tracking metrics. In addition to that, not having data is like driving blindfolded and trying to stay on track without the feedback of vision. How do you even know you're on track? How do you even know you're on course? How do you even know you're on the path, let alone in the ditch? <laughs> or how do you even know if you're about to enter the ditch unless you have the feedback called vision? Same thing in your business. How do you know if you're progressing or regressing or stagnating unless you have that data? Well, you don't. Let's be real, you don't. So having that feedback is key. And unless you have it, you're driving blind, friends. You're driving blind. I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of driving blind. That's a rather precarious position to be in as a driver, whether it be in life, in a vehicle, or whether it be in your business. We need feedback. We need to make pivots quickly. We need to make uh, that course correction quickly. Otherwise, we're going to end up in the ditch or worse, dead. We don't want that. We need that feedback. The third reason why having data and using data and tracking data to measure progress is so mission critical is we can't get from where we are to where we want to be powerfully and effectively and strategically without the anchor points of where we are and where we want to go. Think about it like a GPS. Could you imagine trying to get somewhere with a GPS if you don't give the GPS your coordinates on where you are now? Similarly, if you don't give it the destination where you want to go, there's a box you need to check on your smartphone typically. If you want to use the GPS on your smartphone and it asks the question, do you give permission to grant your current location. If you check no to that, it cannot feed you directions. It cannot prompt you on turn left here, on this street, turn right, on this street, go uh, forward for 1.4 uh, miles or kilometers. It will not be able to give you any data on how to get to your desired destination until and unless you give it your current coordinates. Well, the same thing with your business. How do you know how to get from where you are to where you want to be if you don't know where you are, if you don't know where your current baseline stats are? You can't, and chances are you won't. So with that as a preface, I'm assuming at this point you guys have some semblance of conviction and certainty that making it a mission-critical must to track your data is now more critical than ever. You guys with me on that? You got to make it a must, guys. It's fun to be able to track your numbers. Could you imagine playing a basketball game, a soccer game, a hockey game, golf, or anything like that if you're not tracking your numbers? Sure, it might be kind of fun, might be kind of cool, but what really makes it fun is if you're able to see how you improved from yesterday, how you improved from your stats last week, how you improved from your stats last month, how you're improving amongst the group, how you're improving against the competition. That makes it even more fun. Would you agree? So if there's anything, any other reason other than it makes it more fun, more fulfilling, more fruitful, you look no further. That's perhaps the biggest reason why you want to track your metrics because it makes it more fun, more fulfilling, and more fruitful. So with that being said, let's talk about the metrics that matter, shall we? The metrics that matter. I'm going to go through a few key categories. So the first one is goal metrics goal metrics. So that means the desired destination in the GPS and the metrics that are relevant to that desired destination, such as obviously income. Start with that. How much do you want to make within the next 12 months? Okay. That would be a goal metric. Another metric would be, okay, if I want to make that income, how much volume do I need to do based on my basis points? That would be another metric is loan volume. Funded loan volume. Another metric linked to that might be how many units do I need to close based on my average loan size, okay? Now you can determine how many units you need to close. 
Another metric linked to your goal metrics might be how many apps do I need to generate based on my app to close deal ratio? How many leads do I need to generate based on my lead to app ratio? So all of those are goal metrics, but notice they're all inextricably linked to your outcome, your desired outcome, your desired destination. How much do you want to earn? And that probably or should be inextricably linked to the lifestyle you want to live, the kind of impact you want to make on the world, the kind of contribution you want to make in the world, uh, the kind of lifestyle expenses that are tied to your ideal lifestyle. You get the idea. So it all comes back to not what you want to do for the business, but what do you want the business to do for you? It's a vehicle. Your business is a vehicle to give you the income, the lifestyle, and the contribution you want, that you want for yourself and your family, period. It's not about you being a slave to the business. It's about the business being a vehicle to give you the income, the contribution, the lifestyle that you want for yourself and your family. You guys with me on that? So now we've got some metrics tied to your goals. We call those goal metrics. But there are other goals and other metrics, rather, that we want to be tracking beyond that, that most mortgage professionals never even conceive of, let alone utilize. So let's talk about those. The next one is called activity metrics. Activity metrics. So examples of that would be calls to clients or calls to realtors. In other words, if you want to make 10 G's a month, you want to make 120 G's per year. There's going to be a certain amount of units required to close. There's going to be certainly a certain amount of volume required to be funded, a certain amount of units required to be closed, a certain amount of applications taken, a certain amount of leads generated, right? Well, how does all that happen? How do you get all those leads, apps, and closings? Do they just come out of thin air? Do they just show up because you put a sign up on the street saying you're open for business? I don't think so. You probably noticed by that by now. You actually have to go out there and hustle. You know, the birds, sure, God feeds the birds, but he doesn't put worms in their nest, does he? You, you actually have to get out of the nest and you got to go fight for those worms. You got to go find those worms. Same thing here. You got to go out there and fight for business, find that business, seek the business, beat the bushes for business. It doesn't come just because you show up and you got a breath and you can fog a mirror. You got to go out there and hustle. The dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. And a lot of mortgage professionals, they're focusing on the wrong things. They're focusing just on the income. Sure, do that. They're focusing just on the units. Sure, do that. They're focusing just on the volume. Sure, do that. But if you only focus on that, and you neglect the activity metrics that drive the pipeline for leads and applications that actually culminate into closed deals and money in your wallet, you're gonna lose sight of the routine that produces the result. Everyone wants a champion level result, but very few people are willing to do what it takes to have the champion level routine. And it's a mission critical must that you become process driven as opposed to just outcome driven. Because if you're just focusing on the outcome and you're sitting on the couch eating bonbons, watching TV, instead of focusing on the routine, the process, it's always going to fall short. You're, you'll be in a cul-de-sac of frustration, spinning your wheels, wondering why it ain't working. Because at the end of the day, once you know where you want to go and you're committed to that outcome, now we need to determine what's the daily routine. And that's where the activity metrics come in. So how many calls per day? How many calls per week to clients? How many calls per day, how many calls per week to realtors are going to requ be required in order to get your outcome? Well, we need to reverse engineer it. Let's talk realtors, for example. Let's say in order to get your outcome of 10 Gs a month, you need to have three or let's say call it four. Let's just call it three closings from realtors. Let's say you're brand spanking new. Okay. So that means I need to get three partners who give me one deal a month. Solid partner. In order to get three partners, I'm probably going to need to do... I'd say 10 solid realtor meetings. In order to get 10 solid realtor meet meetings, I'm probably going to need to get on the phone with 20 to 30 people live. OK, 
Okay. I need to make a live connection on the phone, obviously with the right script, with the right words that work, with the right presence, with the right posture, with the right positioning. It's not just about what you say. It's how you say it. It's how you show up. It's with the confidence and the certainty and the conviction of a champion. But let's say all that's in place. So that means 30 meetings. I need to add, I, I, pardon me, I have 30 live connections. And then that, that'll culminate into 10 actual booked events. Maybe it might be 15 actual booked events. And out of those 15, 10 will show up. And out of those 10 who show up, I'm going to get three solid partners. Let's just go with that. Just very conservative numbers. Okay. Obviously, you could probably, if you're really good at what you do, you're really great on the phone, you're really good at overcoming objections, you show up with certainty, you could probably do even better numbers. You get the idea though. You reverse engineer it. Then how many live connections can I do per hour? Well, it might require me to smile and dial for an hour to get one solid live connection. So that's 30 hours. Okay. So how many hours am I going to do per week to get to that 30 hours? Maybe I'm going to do two hours per day, Monday to Friday. That's 10 hours a week. Okay. So that's three weeks worth of 10 hours of focused, productive, outbound conversations with realtors with a unique value proposition that positions me as irreplaceable, indispensable, makes me the only logical choice, makes them want to meet with me. Not, hey, I got great rates, great service, throw me a bone, but hey, I've got a killer system for helping my top VIP partners grow their business, attract more listings, generate more buyers, close more deals. And I'm curious to know if you might be a good fit for what I got. Would you be open to get a coffee sometime in the next week or two to see if you might qualify for my VIP partnership program, right? Again, posture, unique value proposition. Now we're going to track the metrics. Now we're going to put a big board up or have a napkin on my desk. I don't care, but some way to track my goal versus my actual. My goal this week is 15 appointments book. My actual right now, as of now, is five. Okay, so I need 10 more. So you make it a game with yourself to track these key performance indicators. Those are called activity metrics, okay? Most people just fly by the seat of their pants, winging it. They fall into delusion thinking they're busy, but they don't realize there's a big difference between busy and being productive. Have you noticed? It's like there's a big difference between splashing around in the water versus swimming towards a desired outcome with efficiency and power. You guys don't want to just splash around, do you? You want to be efficient, powerful, effective. And so that's where these metrics, these activity metrics come in, where you can start to make a game with yourself every single week, every single day you have an outcome. I'm going to make three live connections. I'm going to book an appointment a day. Three live connections, appointment a day. And that's your goal. Come hell or high water. Three live connections, appointment per day. Three live connections, appointment per day. I guarantee you, you focus on that like a laser beam to the neglect of all the other minutia and you give yourself an hour or two per day, an hour of power or more per day and let all your operations get pushed to the side just for an hour or two per day. And you focus like a laser beam on activity metrics and hitting those activity metric outcomes. I guarantee you, your business will blast through the stratosphere and beyond faster than you ever thought possible. Most mortgage professionals don't have a clue about this. It's the difference between the top dogs and all the rest. Just that one difference in focus. Focusing on the champion level routine versus just the champion level result. Everyone wants a champion level result. Very few people are willing to level up their game to have a champion level routine. You can't afford to have a chump level routine if you want champion level results. You guys with me on that? So that's the second key metric is activity metrics. The third metric is funnel metrics, funnel metrics. So these are the metrics that you would find quite familiar if you're used to doing funnels on Facebook or Google AdWords or anything like that with pay-per-click type of ads where you're driving through a specific funnel with multiple touch points with an opt-in page and all that kind of stuff. But for the uninitiated, here are some of the key metrics you'll, you'll want to track if you're doing anything with pay-per-click advertising, for example, or radio advertising or anything like that. Any paid consumer direct advertising. The first one is cost per lead. How much am I paying per lead? 
Next one is cost per app. How much am I paying per application? Cost per closing. How much am I paying to acquire a new client? And then the last piece, perhaps the most important, is a return on investment. For every dollar I invest in this advertising, how much am I getting back? Am I getting a buck fifty, two bucks, five bucks, ten bucks? Obviously, the more the better. It's not about how much money you spend on advertising. It's how much more money do you get back for every dollar you put in? The more money, if you're able to turn a dollar into two dollars to three dollars to five dollars, why would you limit your marketing budget to 20 G's a month? Why wouldn't you keep doing that as often as much as possible till you hit the point of diminishing returns? I mean, if you can turn a, a, a dime into a dollar, when would you want to stop doing that? You'd be doing that all day long and Sundays, right? Why cap it with a, you know, some, why would you limit it with a self-imposed cap saying, hey, I'm only going to spend 20,000 a month on advertising. Are you kidding me? If I can turn dimes into dollars, I'm going to do that all day long as much as possible. I'm going to scale that up as high as possible until I hit the point of diminishing returns. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so that's funnel metrics. Uh, the next metric, metric number four category is database metrics. Database metrics. Most people have no clue about this, okay? This is what I call advanced ninja knowledge when it comes to metrics that matter. Database metrics are the metrics that you're getting from the database, from your database as it relates to repeat and referral business from past clients. So as I'm sure you're well aware, most mortgage professionals completely shit the bed when it comes to following up with their database, mining the gold from their database, maximizing their database, drawing as much profit producing nectar out of the database. They're more interested in hunting than they are in gathering and cultivating. Let's be real. That's just the proclivity of most loan officers out there. And if that's you, you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in many cases. Okay. If your database marketing is on point, you should be getting at least two to three deals per month for every 100 past clients. Two to three deals per month in the form of repeat and referral business from your past clients for every 100 past clients you have in your database. So if you have a thousand people in your database, you can do the math on that. That's a lot of money you're leaving on the table if you're only getting half a deal per every 100. So that's another metric you wanna track is how many deals are you getting per 100 in the form of repeat and referral from past clients? Chances are it's a lot less than two or three. And you're leaving a lot of money on the table by not mining the gold from that database strategically, which is a key reason why people work with us because we have the proven system, the proven plan, the proven campaigns to be able to put that whole process on autopilot. Just set it and forget it. It works while you're not working. So that is the fourth metric you want to be cognizant of and utilize to track your progress is database metrics. The last type of metric that I want to talk about is conversion metrics. Another type of metric that hardly any loan officers track, let alone uh, utilize to judge their progress by. So examples of that I've alluded to already, a lead to app ratio, uh, app to close deal ratio, and also lead to close deal ratio. So tracking those ratios so that you can see for every 100 leads, how many are those? How many of those are turning into apps? Out of 100 leads, how many of those are turning into closings? And that again, helps you to judge your progress in conversion. It's not enough to just to get a lead. It's about improving your sales ability, your marketing ability, your trust injection ability to convert more of those leads into apps and closings. You give 100 leads to one guy, he'll close three. You give 100 leads to another guy, same caliber of leads, same quality of leads, he'll close 10. What's the difference? Skill, certainty, salesmanship, all kinds of both soft and hard skills, both marketing, skills before the touch point live as well as sales skills when you get them on the phone that make a massive difference in conversion that's another reason why people work with us because they don't want to be throwing yogurt at the fan hoping something sticks letting all kinds of money sift through their fingers 
like pouring water into a bucket with a big gaping hole at the bottom of the bucket. It doesn't make sense. So they come to us for the proven systems to maximize conversion, to maximize their ability to get these people pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, hot for what they've got, predisposed to buy before they even talk to them. That's called positioning. It's called indoctrination. It's called positioning yourself as the expert, the only logical choice. And that's not just hoping, wishing, and praying. It's a science. It's a predictable science. And once you put that in place in your business, your conversion rates can go up by 20, 30, 40, 50, even 100%. So those are the metrics that matter, guys. I want you to consider that winners take imperfect action while losers are still polishing up their perfect plans, trying to get it all perfect. So here's something worth writing down. It's a mantra I speak to myself, and it's a mantra that every top producer that I work with, that I help, I encourage them to speak to themselves. And it's this, I seek progress, not perfection. I seek progress, not perfection. You're not judging yourself against where you think you should be. That only causes frustration and overwhelm and stress and fear and doubt and inadequacy and lack and scarcity. Instead, you judge yourself against who you were yesterday. You may not be where you want to be yet in terms of what you believe you're capable and worthy of, but you sure as heck aren't who you were. You're getting better. You're getting stronger. You're getting sharper. Seek progress, not perfection. And how do you judge progress? You judge progress by the metrics that matter. You start to identify just one, two, maybe three key performance indicators, KPIs. And you start to have fun tracking your progress. Have a whiteboard up. Track your outcomes, your actuals against your goals and start to see yourself moving forward. Celebrate your success. Fan to flame that celebration of praising progress that feeds your fire of competence and confidence and has you feel like you're moving forward. That's where all the nectar is, friends. All the juice in life is not in getting to the destination. All the juice in life is found in making progress. That's where joy is found. That's where passion is found. That's where fulfillment is found. That's where the real juice of life is found. It's found in progress, not stagnation, not regression, not complacency, not neglect, not drifting, but driving forward. So focus on your outcome. Focus on where you want to be. Focus on your desired outcome, but also celebrate your progress and your wins along the way. Any obstacle that comes your way, it's not a set back, it's a setup. It's not a stumbling block, it's a stepping stone. It's not there to hinder you, it's there to help you. It's not there to stop you, it's there to serve you to your greatness, serve you to your strength, serve you to your power, serve you to your wisdom, serve you to your skill. It's making you sharper, it's making you better. So you can become the person you need to become to attract the dream that you're committed to fulfilling in your life for yourself and your family. To make that happen, we need to cultivate a habit, a routine of continually pushing the needle on progress. How do you know if you've made progress? You're tracking it. You're tracking your key performance indicators. You're tracking your progress with the metrics that matter. So I hope you guys have gotten value for this conversation. I trust that you've gotten some here that you can use in your life and your business to push the needle on profit and performance to help you cultivate a routine, a habit, a lifestyle of progress. My question to leave you with are what are the one, two, or three key performance indicators, your key performance indicators, your KPIs that you're going to start to track from this day forward to start making a game of this thing called business and not just play not to lose, but play to win. Play the game to win and have fun moving forward and praising your progress.
What are the top three key, key performance indicators you're going to be tracking? That's the goal. That's the outcome that I want you to have from hearing this and being part of this conversation. Not just hearing it and then going on with your day, but hearing it and say, okay, from this day on, I'm tracking these metrics and I'm going to cultivate a habit of praising progress based on these three metrics. The winners in life, they take information and they instantly pivot into implementation. And that's why they have transformation because they are action takers. While everyone else is talking, they're walking. While everyone else is dreaming, hoping and praying, they're making it happen. They're taking the action in spite of having it all figured out. Winners take imperfect action while losers are still polishing up their perfect plans. Be winners, guys. Be champions. Take action. Take massive action and you'll get massive results. If you would like to learn more about how we can help you take your business to the next level from where you are to where you wanna be, and you'd like more clarity on what's the shortest path to the cash to get you there. If you'd like to learn how we can help you if indeed we decide we're the right fit to work together with the right systems, the right plan, the right campaigns, the right mindset, the right marketing to help you go from where you are to where you wanna be better, faster, easier than you'd ever get there on your own, then I invite you to reach out to us and book a complimentary breakthrough coaching call with either myself or one of my certified consultants. I invite you to book a call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call, I trust you. I absolutely guarantee it'll be the most valuable 60 minutes you've invested in your business in a very, very long time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is Doran Aldana from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you're going to get massive results, y'all. Make it a great day. Keep being awesome. I love you. Be blessed. And remember, you're too blessed to be stressed. Peace.